Hey there, traders. Welcome back to another daily recap for Monday, September 30th, 2024. Right now, it's a few minutes before 8 a.m. Eastern. My name is Sam, and what we do here each day is start out the morning by identifying levels and zones of support and resistance in the SPY that we use for entering trades in the E-mini futures during the open session for the day. You'll notice a couple levels at 572.36 and 571.42 that are shown in lighter blue lines. These levels may not be as important as the other levels for the day, but I want to keep an eye on them. Depending on what else is going on in the market, if the SPY hits either of these levels, they might offer opportunities for trades. The two pairs of dashed lines are zones. The way I define a zone is an area where price could react from anywhere from within. Essentially, I think of zones as one fat level. After the closing bell, I'll come back to this same chart to discuss any trades that may have resulted from today's levels and zones. And any profit gained or any loss incurred for the day from trading these levels will be logged in a tracking system that will go over at the end of the video. This way, you can see the long-term effectiveness of this trading approach. I'll catch you on the other side after the market closes. And we're back. It's after 7.30 p.m. In case you're wondering why I sounded a little bit different in the morning video, it's because I actually used AI, just cloned my voice, something I use at work anyway, so I had some saved files using this uh, 11 Labs. Actually pretty neat. So, I don't know, it's more convenient for me to just type out what I'm going to say and have the computer do it. So I don't have to lug my microphone around different places. I do travel a lot. Anyway, um, so this is me though. So here are the levels and how price reacted off of them. So just, let's just take a look right now before I dig into the actual trades and you can watch some of them is what price did. They opened right in between this zone and this level, which I said, I wasn't really sure how I was going to treat these levels in the lighter blue line. It really depended on other things happening in the market at the time. So this first one, I mean, it just, this first time it hit this level, it came right up uh, 9.38 or so and pulled away. I mean, that was overhead resistance, no doubt about it. I didn't take this rate, of course, and I really decided against it here, and I really could have. It gave a base hit, but I just decided not to do it. Just, you know, trader's choice. So I missed that one. Um, I considered that sort of done. And then when they got up to this next level, even with a five cent buffer applied, they, they missed it. It would have been 572.31 and they came up within 10 cents uh, a couple times here, pulled away, gave a base hit essentially. So that was a trade. So I didn't want to trust this level for any more future short trades that paid off because you can see this would, well, I don't think it would have worked. Let's see. 31, you want them to come down to 91, somewhere in this neighborhood. So I would have missed it. Anyway, this is um, a non-factor anyway because it's after 3.30. I was kind of away from my computer, didn't really care anything about what the market was doing uh, leading up to 3.30. But anyway, back to this. So there's a base hit. Would have taken a, if you if you taken this level here, that's a base hit. That's a no trade because of the near miss, meandering around. They fall into this zone. Yes, take the trade. Um, in fact, this is a pretty good sign. Because you know the the big picture is is bullish. Now you know the b bottom can fall out and they could they can drop a lot. But there's a lot of bulls that are going to fight important areas. This is an important area. There was an important area down here that developed in real time that I saw. I was ready to buy again down here. So anyway, I scaled in, and you would have scaled in. You would have you know bought one at each level somewhere in the middle, whatever, and given given just a few minutes, whatever this was, uh, two twenty to say call it fifteen within twenty minutes, and they're out of this and, and going up. So a base hit on the combined position. They get back up to this level. You already traded it. It's it's not tradable anymore. And same thing. This You had a chance to trade over here for a short trade. I'm not sure I would take it again. Plus, it's after 3.30. So not messing with this or this. And they hit it to the penny pretty much. This uh, 574.35 all the way up. And where they go? Right to our level and pulled away. But none of this matters. That's after the cutoff time. I just found that... While it does work sometimes, it's safer not to trade within 30 minutes of the opening bell. So effectively, that's three base hits. One here and two here. You know, each level treated independently is how I would look at that. And that's pretty much what I did. In fact, let's look at that now. This starts off at 9.53, and they'd already come up and hit this level earlier, as you know. At some point, I'll scrub ahead here so you can see this. At some point, I make that line dotted. That's my indication that the level's been traded. I'm not sure I want to trust it anymore. Also, I want to talk about this level here. You have an opening range, which is the first 30 minutes of the trading day. So 9.30 to 10 o'clock. Well, oftentimes, sometime after that, whatever happens in that 30 minutes, they'll, they'll come and spike the low of the 
low of the opening range, which is right here, roughly. So um, I put a level around 570.35, and I'm hovering over this 570.75 um, to see. I, I didn't want to take it, but I just was going to see what would happen. Would they come down, spike the low of this, and then rock it back up again, enough for a base hit or so? And they certainly did. I just wasn't in the trade, as you'll see. I'm just This is my cursor waiting at the at the uh, four point or the 40 cent equivalent here in the in the uh, SPY to see what would happen. There's my level, which wasn't on the board this morning, but there it is. So that would have triggered the trade had you chosen, well, if you know what you were looking for and want to take the trade and give this some time. There, there's a base hit right there. They handed it over and then some. Anyway, that wasn't anything. I didn't trade it. So at this point, you know, I'm not going to mess with these levels. They're They're dotted. Go all the way up to 572.36 in that neighborhood. I already talked about that. That was a near miss. So when that happened, I had an order ready to go with it. Uh, I had an order triggered, but I canceled it. And when that all happened, considered it done. They come all the way down into the zone. Somewhere around 2 o'clock, I had a network outage right before 2. So there's a little bit of a glitch here. Let's see, I'm just going to let it play up here. It just kind of jumps to a few minutes after two o'clock and they're on their way down. Lost basically my internet connection for a little while. There we go. It's 205. Anyway, nothing really happened, but they were starting to head down here and I, you'll see my orders in down in the zone right there. Thought I'd buy a couple. You know, if they wanted to go lower, I'd buy again. That's exactly what happened. Ended up having three contracts long. I think this zooms out a little bit so you can see the big picture. There we go. So I'm ready to buy two more down here to add to my position. So I know, know when I'd be out of the money. But there's some important areas down here that I started to, I started to see develop. So I bought another one. So I'm long three. So I'm well. I'm I'm ready to be long in this at this point in the day, based on what I see happening. But I just got the three. I didn't get filled on the two down here. So I took two off at a base hit roughly. Moved it to five hundred dollars even just. It's a nice round. I figure they're gonna they're gonna climb if they can get back up here again above this because this is the area. This is the support area. It doesn't matter that they came down and spiked it. It's the way I see it. So now I trailed the one remaining contract with a I guess about a six point trailer, and that worked out pretty good. Pulled me up quite a bit. Most of the points I got, most of the dollars and points that I got today were on this trailer actually. I'll just show you. I think that was about as high as I got. Another another eight hundred and sixty dollars. Another $862.50. So it put me over $1,300. That was it. So filled that and I stopped recording this before 3.30. So I didn't see them jump up until a little while ago when I was back at my computer. So back to the full day on the one minute chart just to show you of the, what is it, seven levels that were hit today. How you would have traded them per the rules for the three trades that would have worked. Short trade here was your first base hit. This was something you would have ignored because of a near miss and a long trade with this combined position and then you ignore these levels on the way back up. On the tracking logs, this is the first one playing by the rules log. You can read this. It's uh, kind of lengthy, kind of wordy, but explains how all these levels were traded. So however many contracts you're able to trade gives you an idea of how much you could have earned today. And I got less points. Uh, most of the 13 $62.50, before commissions, were on that one contract trailer of my three contract position. That's it for today. Thanks for tuning in again. And honestly, after doing what I did this morning with that uh, cloning, that voice cloning thing, that probably is going to save me some time. I know it sounds somewhat artificial, but man, I have to clean up these ums and ahs and clicks and all the mistakes I make making these videos. Um, I'm going to try this out. I've got a a trip in Europe coming up where I'd prefer not to take my microphone and everything. Um, anyway, giving this some thought, but anyway, I hope you found this helpful and useful. I don't know. I don't have a ton of viewers, but that's fine. Those of you who are watching these videos and following along, I do appreciate it because honestly, I'd rather have quality followers to what I'm doing here instead of quantity. At some point I might promote this a little bit, get some more views and subscribers, but this is, I just want it to be organic. So anyway, thanks for hanging in there and following me along. I hope that you're making some money with the levels from the morning. Those of you who are subscribed or have given me your contact information, if you want to find out how to do that, just go to the ticksandtrades.com website. And I explain that in a couple different areas where I'll just provide you the levels in the morning and you can, uh, you can run with them. So tomorrow morning, we'll come back, have new levels on the board, another game plan, 
still in a bullish type of position in the SPY. Didn't really talk about that too much, but on the daily chart, they closed pretty strong. So uh, unless something else happens, they seem to be aiming for a higher destination. We will find out soon enough. Thanks again. Have a great rest of your day.